Hi, welcome to this virtual developer day about Oracle ADF development, web, mobile and beyond. This is the developing mobile web applications with Oracle ADF Faces session. My name is Shai Schmetzer and I'm a director of product management. In this session, we'll discuss how you can use Oracle ADF Faces to build applications that are accessed for mobile devices. In case we'll cover some of the future directions, I'm obliged to show you this message that basically says that we are not committing to any specific features in future versions. So in case you haven't noticed, we are in the midst of a revolution in terms of devices that are accessing our applications. Analysts predict that this year, the number of tablets and smartphones that are being sold is going to outnumber the number of devices such as laptops and desktops. And this changes the way that applications are being accessed. More and more users are using those type of mobile devices to access your web applications. And the question is whether you and your applications are ready for this next wave of devices hitting your applications. Mobile and touch devices have specific challenges associated with them. They pose specific challenges for you as an application developer in terms of the different screen resolutions. Of course, most of the mobile devices have a lower resolution than the type of resolution users are getting on desktop machines. This also comes into effect in terms of the orientation capabilities of the page. For example, most of the mobile devices allow you to change the orientation of the display in the device between landscape and portrait. The limited real estate can be very challenging especially when you're looking into mobile phones. The devices also come with a new way of interacting with the device, specifically touch gestures. No longer is mouse being used, and the keyboard is usually being displayed on the screen, again, taking from the real estate that you previously had. The fact that you don't have a mouse, for example, limited the amount of use that you can do for things like right-click and exact-click on specific points. You need your application to be aware of those limitations and adapt to this new type of interaction with the device. In addition, many of the new devices don't have the full technical capabilities of your desktop. For example, both the iPad and now Android devices no longer show Flash inside their browsers. So if your application was relying on Flash technology, you need to redesign your application or redevelop it or basically have some way to display the same information in a new technical format. One of the common questions that people ask is, can I use the same user interface for multiple devices, or do I need to develop separate multiple user interfaces? So one thing to consider is that in many cases you can actually achieve a single user interface that would run on both tablets and desktops, because they are similar in terms of resolution. While desktop can reach a very high resolution, most of the tablets today will support the 1024 by 768 type of resolution that you have gone to expect from a regular desktop. So if you design your user interface to the tablet specification, the display on the desktop would be pretty good as well. Phones, however, are totally different. It's not just a matter of resolution and again the fact that the keyboard is usually overlaying the page. There's also the issue of network. While many of the users who are using tablets are using it over Wi-Fi connections, most of the people who are using phones tend to use it over mobile network connections, which are slower, and then in turn limit the amount of network connectivity and network traffic that you can expect to send and receive from your application. Because of those critical changes between phones and desktops, the conclusion is that you probably need to consider development of a separate user interface if you're targeting a phone. It's not just a matter of a different layout for your page, it's also the different user interaction. It's much harder to type on the keyboard that shows up on a phone compared to the, tablet, to the keyboard that shows up on a tablet, for example. Therefore, on a user interface that is designed to phone, you want to minimize the amount of coding people need to do 
and allow them to do much more using selection from lists, drop downs, and uh, those type of interfaces. In this session, we'll talk about how you can use Oracle IDF faces to develop for all of those devices. To the final decision about whether you're going to go with the same user interface or multiple user interfaces is up to you. We're going to show you some of the technical implementation details about how you can use IDF faces and target different devices. So first what we want to cover is how you can use your existing Oracle ADF Faces application when accessed for mobile devices. And this is with no changes or very limited number of changes. What Oracle ADF provides you is protection from technology changes. Oracle ADF works at a higher level of abstractions. For example, when you're designing a user interface, you're using components and you're not writing in a specific markup language for a user interface. These abstractions allow us to adapt the framework to new technologies. And in fact, Oracle ADF easily adapts to the new mobile challenges. Here are some of the features that can seamlessly transition your application from being used on a desktop environment to being used in a mobile touch environment. The first thing is touch gesture awareness of components. For example, think about the next challenge. You designed an Oracle ADF faces application, and on one of the buttons, you define a context menu that is invoked by right-clicking on the right mouse button. How is this going to translate and be activated in a world like an iPad where you don't have the mouse and you don't have the right-click option. Luckily for you, the ADF Faces components are now aware of the touch and hold gesture and are able to show a context menu for components if those are defined. Similar operations for touch support are now supporting things like drag and drop in your user interface even without a mouse. Another type of adaptation that Oracle ADF does for you is rendering in new technologies. If you're familiar with the Oracle ADF Faces data visualization component, many of those were using the Flash technology to show dynamic animation in visual components such as the graph as well as the hierarchy viewer. Now with the move to iPads and the lack of Flash support on those devices, we took care of it for you by having our chart components, for example, render using HTML5 technology. Similarly, the hierarchy viewer also renders using HTML technology, allowing you to continue using the same component, get the same type of functionality, but render it on new tablets. There are other components that adapt to the change in interaction patterns. For example, the ADF faces table component which on desktop has been using scroll bars for years, now also supports the concept of pagination. And in fact, when you run your application on a touch device, it would automatically switch to the pagination mode. This allows people to interact with the table without the use of scroll bars, which are found upon in touch environment. We also improved our skin. We created a new skin called Skyros, which is optimized and better suited for touch devices, mobile devices, and slower networks. Another type of adjustment that ADFSs can do automatically for you is layout adjustment. While on desktop, the common layout that you were using for your pages was stretch-based layout, in tablets, flow layout is much more common. So let's see how this comes into the picture. So for those of you who are not familiar with what a stretch layout is, here's an example. On the left side, you see a page displayed in a browser on your desktop, and you can see the page and the content of the page stretches to fill out the full area of the browser. However, if we resize the browser, for example, what you can see on the right side, and we make it a little bit shorter in height, automatically ADF faces would add scroll bars that will allow you to scroll the parts that are hidden in the page. 
notice the discovery is defined for specific areas of the page. So specific islands of information get a scroll bar associated with them. This, however, is not a common interaction pattern on touch devices. So here's the same page running on an iPad, and here you can see some of the adaptions that ADF Faces does in the page. For example, notice the table in the page. If you look in the tablets on the left, which is in landscape mode, the table now has pagination controls. So instead of having a scroll bar to scroll through the table, you can actually use pagination to scroll through the records. In addition, you can use a two-finger swipe from the right to the left to scroll among the columns in your table. As you can see, in the right side, when we're in portrait mode, we can see the full page in our display. However, in the landscape mode on the left, some parts of the page are hidden. However, notice that we don't get a scroll bar. In fact, you can use your finger to swipe the user interface up, and the page would scroll down. So we are basically switched to a flow layout where we don't try and fit everything inside the current visual view, but allow you to instead flow the page and scroll it to further see information. Again, this is done automatically for you if you add one more property to your web XML and change one aspect in your page. In the web XML, what you'll need to add is the property oracle.adf.view.rich.geometry.defaultDimensions and you need to set the value of it to be auto. Once you do this, we automatically adjust the UI to get the dimensions from either the parent or the children, depending on what you define as the top container in the page. And as you can see here, in the top container in your page, container meaning a layout component that contains the other layout and uh, ADFS's component on your page, there's a property there called dimensions from. And you can set this property to be either parent or children. And what you can see here is that by using an expression language that identify, for example, whether the device accessing you is a touch device or not, you can set this value to be parent or children, and then we'll cascade this definition to the rest of the components on your page. So by using this combination of the web XML as well as this dimension form property at the top container of your page, you're able to automatically get your page to flow even if it was defined as a stretch layout before that. So as you can see, ADF Faces makes it very easy to take your existing application as is and run it on touch devices. However, if you're now building new applications and you're aware of the future direction of devices accessing you, you might want to start considering designing your user interface to specifically target those devices and make sure that your application behaves in the best way possible on both desktops and touch and mobile devices. You do this by investing in smarter page layout design. What do we mean when we say smarter page layout design? So again, we're talking about a situation where you want to design the page for both mobile and desktop usage. So you want a single page that will serve both. And what we recommend now is that you start thinking tablet first design. So basically assume that tablets are going to be used to access your UI and design your user interface to behave in a very uh, efficient way on tablets. The UI would then also function properly on desktops. You also need to start thinking about uh, performance aspects of your application. So again, the amount of components on a page, um, the amount of interaction you're doing between the components and the server. You want to design your page in a way that avoids horizontal scrolling or any nested scroll bars, again using flow layout. Mobile design also 
uh, puts a focus on reducing the noise in your application and creating very clean user interfaces that don't overload the user with too much information. This is a little different from the type of UI design that many of us have been using when in a desktop environment where we would cramp as much as possible into a single page. It's very important on a mobile device to ensure maximum readability. This is another reason that you don't want to overload the page with too much information. You might actually want to increase the font for some of your components to make them more readable on mobile devices. The final thing is to apply contemporary styles. Take into account some of the new ways that applications are designed and apply them to your application. Your application doesn't need to look like an old uh, application from the first generation of web applications. You can actually now create very rich type of applications using ADF faces. In that area, Oracle ADF faces have been introducing some new components lately that allow you to better design applications for mobile devices. Specifically, we are going to talk about the Springboard component, the Drawer component, Iconified tabs, and the Grid layout. All of those components have been introduced in JDeveloper 12c. The Grid layout is also available in previous versions of JDeveloper for you to use. So the Springboard is a component that allows you to show a menu comprised of icons. So the component can be displayed either like you see on the left side of the screen, where you have multiple icons, one next to the other, in the center of the screen. And then when you click on it, the icons would animate and move to the top of the screen to create a bar that will allow people to then choose other options from the menu. Again, this is a nice animation, and it also provides a very touch-friendly way to navigate between features in your application. Inside the panel springboard, you can display various regions. So each button, for example, can display a different region inside it. It works pretty similar to the way that you would work with accordions as well as tabs in the sense of using a show detail item component inside the panel springboard. Another component that is very useful in the world of mobile and limited UI space is the new panel drawer component. The panel drawer component is a container component that can open and close pretty much like a drawer. So if you look at the screenshots on the left, you can see at the right side, we have a set of icons. And when you click on one of those icons, the panel drawer will be opened and will animate from the right side and will display additional information. Each one of the icons can display a different layer inside the panel drawer. This allows you to again, minimize the amount of information that you're showing on initial screen and only show additional information when needed in the same screen, but without occupying a precious real estate. The animation aspect of the components allow you to uh, expand it and collapse it at runtime, creating a more efficient user interface. Another new capability is Iconified tabs. This is actually using the same tab component or panel tab component that was there before, but with additional functionality. Now tabs can be also displayed on the left or the right side of the page, in addition to on the top or on the bottom, and they can also have icons displayed on them. Icons are easier to identify instead of reading text, which is the way that maybe you've used to display tabs with. So again, consider switching your UI design to using tabs that use icons and possibly showing it on the side instead of on the top. The panel grid layout is a key new layout component in Oracle ADF faces. Again, this component has been around in uh, JDeveloper 11.117 and it's also, of course, in JDeveloper 12c. 
And what this component allows you to do is to simplify the creation of flow-based layout. The component uses columns and rows to describe a grid layout for your page. This is very similar to the way that you would design regular HTML pages using HTML tables. Similarly here, you'll use rows and columns in each rows to define your page layout and divide your page into sections. It's very easy to uh, design your page, maintain it, and to specify dimensions for each part of your grid. Notice, for example, in this picture that the page can be divided into grids with different sizes, both in terms of the width, height, and also subdivisions. Okay. You can basically, using the panel grid layout, allow for row and column spanning, and it replaces a lot of the nested layouts that you needed to use before. In addition, the panel grid layout uses CSS and div components to create a very efficient HTML page, again performing better in browsers compared to the previous stretch component. So, if you're using Oracle JDeveloper 12C and you're using some of our built-in quick layouts for pages, you might have noticed that those quick layouts have been updated to use panel grid layout in many places. In addition, of course, you can use the panel grid layout in your own applications to create your own user interfaces and have a more efficient and more easy way to define your page structure. Panel grid layout is very predictable in terms of the type of user interface it creates. And in addition, uh, it also provides you with error messaging in case you define some invalid way of uh, defining a page layout. For example, here's an error message that you might get from the panel grid layout if you did something like specifying a fixed width for a column and in addition specifying a column span. This is uh, basically a conflicting message to the panel grid layout in terms of how it should behave and it will notify you that and show you that in the console when you run your application inside JDeveloper. Let's look at an example of how you would do a page layout for a mobile generation of application. So again, we're applying here the concept of tablet-first page design. So we're designing our page to fit nicely inside a landscape orientation tablet. So we're assuming that the tablet can show a 1024 a pixel type of user interface with a good resolution. We also know that the same resolution would be able to display on almost any desktop today. And if the resolution in the desktop environment is higher, we're going to display a nice background fill space uh, image behind the content area. So the page wouldn't look empty, it would actually look nicer. When you switch your device to be in a portrait mode, we're going to use a viewport meta tag to scale the display of the page. So the page would still show all the information, um, but it would be just a little smaller. In addition, note that we're using a flow layout. So content in the page can actually continue beyond the basic viewport that we have displayed in the uh, tablet. And by using a scroll motion with our finger, we'll be able to scroll the page down and see additional information. One nice uh, touch that you can do here is add a sticky footer at the bottom of the page to indicate when the page content is basically at the end. This way people would not try and scroll down if there isn't additional information. By having a footer to the page, they'll be able to recognize that this is the end of the page. In addition, what you want to do is ensure that there are no horizontal scrolling happening in your page. So design your page to actually have all the content fit in the specific resolution that you're using. Again, remember that 
the same page is probably not suitable for being used on phones. In a phone situation, what you might want to do is actually use the same application maybe, but redirect them to a different page that was specifically designed for a phone display. Remember some of the key concepts for a modernized look and feel for your user interface. You want an uncluttered user interface, a user interface that is very clean and provide a simple experience of interaction. Try and minimize the noise in your user interface. Create a user interface that is inviting for people to interact with, that is well integrated, and that is look, uh, that has a contemporary look for the application. So I want to show you what you can do to improve your Oracle IDF faces look and feel on a mobile device. And for this use case, we took an existing application, ran it on a tablet, and took a few screenshots to show you some aspects, and then we'll show you the application after the redesign and how it behaves and looks even better. So in this example, you can see the application running in portrait mode on the iPad. Again, everything would work perfectly fine, but you can notice the empty white space here below here. This is the application again in landscape mode. Again, it doesn't exactly fit into the screen. We have the flow, but we also have a lot of information on the page. For example, the table has a lot of columns and you'll need to use a swipe motion in order to scroll them. This is another part of the application where we allow people to select, for example, something from a list. So we have the list component. You actually need to be exact and click on this little icon over here to expand the list. And then when you click the more info, you'll get a pop-up and the pop-up has a lot of information on it. So again, remember those screenshots and let's now see how we created a simpler mobile experience for the same application, same data, same backend, and just some tweaks that we did for the user interface. So this is an ADF Faces application. Um, you can see it here in a browser, large resolution, an image that covers the extra area. And here it is inside our iPad. Note that in portrait mode, the image stretches to fill out the whole space, so you don't uh, get left with open white space. You just saw the springboard in action, we chose a menu option, springboard jumps to the top, allows us to see information. In the first page what we try to do is uh, minimize the amount of content, so we still are able to look up information and display it on our map, so those are houses for sale on the map, and we have a table, but note that the table only has the columns that are of interest to us. Okay, so this reduces the amount of scrolling uh, that needs to be done in the table. If you want to see more information about a house, you can pick it in the table and then use the panel drawer on the right side to see the information in sort of a pop-up. So this is the drawer opening up, you see the information about the house that you picked up and you can hide the drawer back, so close it back. Similarly, if you choose another house, you can see the information about that house. So this is again a smart way to organize content on the page so the first page is not overloaded with information but the information is still accessible in the context that you were working. Again, the table still behaves like before in terms of the ability to resize column, move columns. All of this is available for you with touch gestures on your iPad device. Let's go over to the second page in our application and we'll do this by choosing the next option in our Springboard. And this page uses the hierarchy viewer component in ADF faces to show us um, the cities and allow us to drill down in a city to see houses that are for sale, then possibly isolate a specific house and see information about this house. So the interesting thing to see here is that this is now done with HTML5 instead of Flash. In addition, when we are scrolling the cards in here, we're doing it with finger gestures rather than clicking on small icons. Again, adaptability of the components to the new environment. In this page, we can see various graphs and charts. Again, the graphs now are displayed with HTML5. Um, one example at the bottom right is the new um, Sunburst component. Again, it still has interactivity, still allows you to do the drill down, but now everything is uh, implemented with HTML5. You as a developer, you don't have to learn HTML5. You just use the components and it will give you all the functionality you need, whether you're running on a desktop 
or inside an iPad. Drag and drop also still works, just click, hold, and move around, like that. Let's move to the next feature. Here we can actually see the list component again. Note that what we did here is we made the whole title of the list clickable to make it easier to click it with a finger. We use the scroll capabilities of the list component and when we pop up the more information about a specific house we are using the tab, iconized tab, to have the information set up in a way that not everything is on a single page. We could have probably made this window even smaller and each part of the information is displayed on a different tab. So as you've seen, you can basically design an application to look and behave nicely on a mobile device. However, there's one more aspect to mobile application design that you might want to use, and that's the concept of responsive design. Responsive design is a user interface that respond, responds to changes in resolution. It's basically a user interface that you design to be used on multiple resolution, allowing you, for example, to indeed keep using the same page on both tablets and smartphones, but adjusting the user interface at runtime to meet the needs and the display capabilities of each of those um, devices. So, for example, in the diagrams that you can see on the right, you can see that on a big device we might show information one next to the other, while when we're switching to a device with a limited uh, horizontal space, we might put one item above the other, still showing the, all the same information but in a different layout. Similarly, what you can see in the bottom part of the screen is that on a big resolution, we might be able to show some information on the left and the rest on the right. But on a smaller resolution, we might actually want to collapse the information on the left and have it appear when you click a little menu option and only then cover part of the screen with this information. So concepts like this and the ability to switch the user interface display at runtime is called responsive design. We're going to talk about two ways to implement responsive design in Oracle ADF phases. One way allows you to generate a different HTML from the server and deliver it to the client based on the user that access you or the device that access you. So this is what we actually call server-side adaptive design. What you can do in your application is get information about the specific client accessing you, the agent that is accessing you, either directly from the request object or using JavaScript. JavaScript would allow you to get even deeper information beyond, for example, the uh, type of touch device. Uh, JavaScript would allow you to get everything, including um, aspects like the resolution of the device accessing you. Once you get this information, you store it on the server, so part of your JSF engine, for example, in a managed bin, and then you're going to use this information to influence the page that you deliver back to the client. Okay? And the way that you do it is by using expression language inside your page that would change the display properties of various components. A very basic example is if you're familiar with the panel dashboard component, one of the things that you can define there is how many columns of information you're showing. And this might be three columns of information when the resolution is high, but when you're switching to a smaller resolution and being accessed by a device such as a phone, you might want to switch it to be a single column, and then automatically the panel dashboard would put the rest of the components that were previously displayed side by side, one below the other. Similarly, you can use those type of expression language to show and hide components on your page, or even to resize components on your page, all basically happening on the server side when you're accessing the page from a specific agent, we're getting the information about this agent, and we're returning a specific design of the page to the client. An even more advanced implementation of responsive design with Oracle ADF faces can be done using media query um, inside your page. 
the media query allows you to use style sheets and change them depending on, for example, on the resolution of your page. For example, what you see here in the code is basically we're checking the screen resolution of the device accessing us. And based on the specific resolution we're getting, if it's um, smaller than 1025 pixels, we specifically assign properties for specific style classes. Those style classes would later on be used inside our page to control the display of items in our page. The advantage of this approach is that this is actually happening and can happen even after the page has been delivered to the client. So for example, you can use this technique to adapt and respond to the change in orientation of a device while the page is being displayed on the client. Let's see an example of how you build such a page and how a page like this is going to behave at runtime. The concept here is pretty simple. You're actually going to design a page that contains items for all cases. In our case, we're going to display two boxes, panel box one and panel box two. However, we're going to have two instances of panel box two. One is on top and one is on the right side. If we are in a wide display, we are going to hide the top one and show the right one. If we are on a narrow display, we are going to hide the side one and show the top one. And in order to do that, we are basically going to change the style sheet of the box to use display true or false for specific components in specific resolutions. So this is an example of a responsive ADF faces based page. It's a very basic page where we have information about departments, information about the employees in the department, and a menu at the top along with an icon and a logo for our uh, company and some text at the bottom. That's the footer of the page. So the interesting thing to see is this is how it will display on wide um, screens. If I take the same browser and resize it to be a smaller, you can see several things that actually happened. So one thing to note is the logo here, title, and the bottom parts changed font and size. Again, this is big and this is small. Okay. The other aspect is of course the arrangement of the page. Over here in a wide screen we have department next to employees when we go to a narrow screen, department jumps over to the top and the employees are beneath it. And one more change that we're doing here, look at the menu. Right now all the options are available for you horizontally. And when we go to a narrow screen like that, we just have one option and when we click on it, we'll get a drop down with the other options. So all of those changes happen dynamically as you resize the page. Okay. One more aspect to note, um, if we have small scale uh, screen, if we go to a department with a lot of employees, we get a flow layout over here that allows us to scroll through the page until we reach our footer. Okay. And then we can load even more records and again scroll it to the bottom, like that. So this is also imp uh, implementing a flow layout for our page which will work great on fonts, for example. Right, so now that we've seen this example and we sh saw the various changes in layout and size of uh, fonts, icons, stuff like that, let's see how we actually implemented this example. So the first part of our implementation is a skin. Inside the skin, we are defining some style classes. Okay, and um, we define a style class we call wide, a style class we call narrow, an adjustable font, okay, and another type of font called icon home. Okay, by default, the wide is shown and the narrow is hidden. Okay, 
and the adjustable font is large. Okay. In addition, the this style class for another font is in 36 points. So this is the default and this is what we're using in a wide screen. In a wide screen, the font up here is big, okay, um, and those areas are being shown. This is in a wide mode. Then in a narrow mode, what we're going to do is we're going to override those values with other values. And what we did here is we put it inside the template that we use in our page. So here's the template for our page. It's a regular flow-based template, so we actually have um, a grid layout over here, dividing our page into top, center, and bottom. This is where the footer is, this is uh, where the title is, and this is where the content of the page goes into. But the important thing in order to do the um, responsive design is actually over here as a resource using CSS. Okay. What are we doing here? Over here we're looking at the media and we're looking at the screen size that is accessing us. And in cases where the max width is 700, okay, we are going to actually use the narrow as display on and the wide will be hidden. Okay, so this is the reverse from what we're doing in the default skin. In addition, the adjust font is going to be small and the icon font is going to be only 24 pixels again, compared to a large and 36 pixels. So we're basically saying, in situations where the screen is narrower than 700, this is the implementation we're going to do. One more thing that we have here is a reference to a, a font, and this is a web font icon. Okay, This allows us to represent icons using fonts and the font size is actually controlled from here. So this, all of this is inside our template, which means that we don't have to write it in each one of the pages in our application. Every page that inherits from this template is able to use this. Right now, those type of queries, such as media and font face, need to be at the page level. Uh, we're planning to add those uh, as ability to edit directly in the skin level in future versions and then you don't actually have to have it inside your page, it's in a central location inside the skin. So right now in order to solve this central issue I'm putting everything that controls the change inside a responsive template. Then in our actual page we play with different sections of the page and whether we show or hide them by assigning them a specific style class of either narrow or wide. So for example in our page this is the menu. There are two ways to show the menu. One option is we show a navigation pen with all the options next to it and this is what you see when we're in this mode, in the wide mode. So this is going to be displayed when wide is enabled. When we move the screen and resize it to be small we switch to narrow and in narrow, we're just showing one menu option with a show pop-up behavior on top of it, and that's basically this component with a pop-up. Okay. So this is the example of how we handle the menu. For the department location, again, we're actually defining the department box twice in our page. One time the department is actually defined at the top, so at this row, and then in the row below it, we again define the department over here. Okay, So we actually have it twice on the page, but we're only showing it once. If we are in a wide mode, we'll show it next to the information about employees, which is what we get um, in the next cell over here. And if we're in a narrow mode, this is going to be hidden because wide is going to say display none and we're going to show it on top over here. For the title of the page and the icons there, we're actually um, defining those in our page template. Okay. And we're using, again, a web font icon over here to show the logo and a specific text 
both of those have style classes associated with them and those style classes changes as we move from wide to narrow to basically resize the icon and resize the font again the effect can be seen here as we move to a narrow page and that's how we implemented the responsive design in our application and this is again using just ADF faces and some trickery done using skins and a media query inside our page. One more feature that Oracle ADF faces enhanced in the latest versions is the aspect of skinning. Skinning in Oracle ADF faces allows you to achieve a better user interface, a more modern user interface. The user experts at Oracle created a new skin called the Skyro skin. This skin has a more modern look and feel. It uses flat concepts, similar to what you now see in iOS 7, for example. And beyond just the fact that it has a more modern look and feel, it also behaves and performs better. We eliminated the use of a lot of the images that were used in previous skins and replaced them with native CSS and div components instead. This creates a lighter, faster skin for your application that will perform better and will create less network traffic when accessed from mobile touch devices. The Skyro skin is available for you if you're using JDeveloper 11.117 or JDeveloper 12. In addition, we improved our skin editor to give you an even easier experience of customizing the skin and changing color schemes and look and feel for the application. You can use this visual editor to define your skins and make an application that conforms to your demands in terms of look and feel. In summary, the new devices appearing in the market require us to rethink the way that we design our user interface. Oracle ADF Faces is here to protect you from specific technology changes, but you need to start designing with a mobile-first approach. So when you're approaching designing new user interfaces for web application, think about the clients that are going to access them and start designing for those clients. The new capabilities, components, and features in Oracle ADF Faces can help you create a more modern look and feel for your application and an application that would better respond to changes in demands from client devices. To learn more, visit the Oracle ADF page. Also, don't forget to join our Oracle ADF community. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Google and watch our videos on the Oracle ADF Insider channel. Thank you very much for attending this seminar.